Yo, what's up, YouTube? How you doing out there today? We're back here with another top 10. This was 10 animals that ate their owners, okay? Uh, I just want to start off with the disclaimer, man. If you're out there owning, like, a huge snake or a bear or a tiger, you know, a gorilla, these are things you probably don't want to own. They're not your traditional household pets. They're not going to come in excited at the door when you come in after work and let you pet their little head and rub their belly and feed them. If anything, they might want you to feed them if you understand what i mean not necessarily give them bowl of kibble man so you know just full disclaimer man if you're out there doing some crazy stuff some crazy stuff might then happen to you so let's go ahead and see what's happening with these owners and their pets their pets hi it's katrina from a python who hugged too tight to a chimp who lost his mind here are 10 cases of animals who ate Kibbles their are owners beautiful. you can't own them though. Number 10. Tiger Cynthia Lee Gamble, an experienced tiger handler who lived in Danforth Township, Minnesota, unexpectedly lost her life to one of her big cats in 2006. The 52-year-old woman's remains were discovered in an enclosure on her property where a 500-pound Bengal tiger had mauled her to death. Yeah, that's rough. Gamble had kept tigers for over a decade with no issues, according to Pine County Sheriff Mark Mansavage. A friend went to visit her and found her body, and the local community was left heartbroken, especially for Gamble's 14-year-old son, Garrett. It appeared as if the sliding door to a tiger enclosure was left open, mm. and the animal attacked her more or less without warning. The tragedy was completely unforeseen, especially given Gamble's many years of experience with big cats, with her animals even appearing on NBC's Today Show and in the major movie Vertical Limit. See, I totally get that. You have decades of experience dealing with these animals, or a decade of experience dealing with these animals. Um, but isn't it kind of like a ticking time bomb? I mean, this is a tiger, man. They're supposed to be out in the wild. These are wild animals. They're not fully domesticated, small little beings that you can control if they ever lashed out. These are larger than you. They weigh way more than you. If they're having a bad day, you're gone. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, it's not like a cat that just clawed your leg and, hey, what the hell? You know, I mean, this animal, if it's having a bad day and takes you out, you have no hope. Simply put, if anyone was qualified to handle tigers, it was her. This unfortunate incident reminds us that no matter how accustomed someone is to interacting with wild animals, at the end of the day, they will still behave according to instinct. That's right. Number nine, Python. A 31-year-old Hampshire, England man named Dan Brandon learned the hard way that it is actually possible to love someone to death. Nice. When in August 2018, his 8-foot-long African rock python, ironically named Tiny, attacked him. Brandon's mother found him unconscious on his bedroom floor with the snake nearby, and it was unfortunately too late to save him. She had heard a loud thud coming from her son's room earlier that day, but assumed he had dropped something. Oh. Brandon was an experienced snake handler who never had problems with Tiny before the unfortunate tragedy. The coroner concluded that he died from constriction and that the snake probably coiled itself around his neck and yeah. squeezed him, possibly out of affection. Although Tiny didn't oh eat the man, God. there are many instances of pythons devouring their victims. In June 2018, Damn, dude, so that, that's got to be a terrible memory for the mom. Dude, you heard the thud of your son as he was dying, and you thought it was something else. Totally innocent, a totally innocent uh, accident, right? I mean, she didn't know, but damn, dude, now you got to live with that thought for the rest of your head that you could have probably went up there and done something and saved him. Um, but the amount of pressure that they put on you, that yeah, I think that's more than you could actually fight off, right? That a python would put on you. Indonesian authorities reported that a 23 foot long giant python killed a 54 year old woman named Watiba and swallowed her whole. Damn. She had gone missing days earlier while tending to her vegetable garden, which has her sandals and machete turning up the following day. Local residents found a strangely bloated python and killed it to find out what was inside its stomach. Gruesome footage of villagers cutting the snake open and discovering Watiba intact went viral, Dude, that's sparking actually widespread shock and horror across the internet. Even if snakes have feelings and don't want to eat you, oh a hug from an eight-foot python is just not a good idea. Number eight, wolf Oof. dogs. Westmoreland County, Pennsylvania resident Sandra L. Piovison was extremely devoted to the nine wolf dogs she spent 10 years of her life raising since they were cubs. 
that all changed in July 2006 when the 50-year-old woman's body was discovered at her home in Salem Township, inside an enclosure where she kept the canine hybrids. Sandra's wolf dogs had turned on her and mauled her to death, yeah. an autopsy determined, and the coroner ruled multiple soft tissue injuries as her official cause of death. Jeez. They may have been more wolf than dog, and had most likely become a pack amongst themselves, and she was not included. So if we're learning something quickly from this video, it's that the animals that you shouldn't really own are the ones taking you out. Uh, the, the python, I guess so many people own a python, but I'm not trying to own a reptilian myself. It's hard to judge their emotional state for me. Um, so I don't know, that's, you know, just take it as it comes. It sounds crazy that someone would keep a pet with wild DNA and not expect something like this to happen, but Piovison's nine wolf dogs were just a handful of the thousands that are known to exist. There are also yeah, varying definitions dogs. of what a wolf dog even is. Some people argue that wolves and dogs are essentially the same animal but they're not. since they are so genetically similar. Others think of them as a direct first-generation product of dogs mating with wolves. But there is an actual wolf-dog breed, which originated from dogs and wolves breeding, but goes back several generations. We do not breed wolves to dogs, explained John Davis, vice president of the United States American Wolf Dog Association, who spoke with the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette following Piovison's death. We breed American wolf dogs to American wolf dogs. We raise dogs. Davis hmm. shunned any negative media coverage what do you guys of think about that? death. Do you think that these wolf dogs, though, even though they're just breeding wolf dog to wolf dog, the ones that have uh, come from generations past, that there is still some wild innate nature uh, in them that is different from your typical household domesticated dog? I think there is a, a more wild uh, side to them that yearns for that hunt versus your average just home dog you know like a shih tzu or you know a schnauzer or a poodle right it's totally different than a wolf so pointing out that attacks are rare although the woman was not a member of the organization her wolf dogs were not registered and she did not have the necessary license from the pennsylvania game commission to own the hybrids Curiously, the agency knew Piovison had the animals, but did not take action because she did have state dog licenses, and it's difficult to prove whether a canine is a dog or a wolf. Mm -hmm. Over the course of several decades, police visited the woman's house numerous times in response to complaints of noise and odors, but never charged her with any crimes. In the words of Westmoreland County Humane Officer Elaine Gower, she was pretty much on guard with me because she knew that I knew that this wasn't a great situation. Yeah. It turned out very badly for her. Yeah, dude. Number seven, pigs. That's, that's rough when you got multiple warnings and, and uh, reports and you had many outs, right? You had many times to get out of that situation and she stayed committed to those dogs, those wolf dogs, and ultimately those wolf dogs were her demise. Damn. In 2012, a 69-year-old farmer named Terry Vance Garner went outside to feed the pigs at his rural Coos County, Oregon property and never returned. His family leader found his dentures and body parts in the pig's enclosure. Although the man's cause of death seems obvious, considering the circumstances, prosecutors were not quick to rule out foul play or a medical emergency, such as a heart attack, yeah, a heart that may attack. have caused him to collapse. And then they they also wondered him, if Garner's pigs deliberately knocked him over while he fed them especially considering that one of the animals had displayed aggression to the farmer on at least one previous occasion. For all we know, it was a horrific accident, but it's so doggone weird that we have to look at all possibilities. I mean, these are regular pigs. These aren't ho like, uh, you know, wild hogs or anything. Like a, a regular pig would eat a human? I didn't know that. Let me know if I'm understanding that any different here. It's, it sounds like, yeah, just a regular pig. I mean, your, your pink pig, right? Uh, that they ate a human? I did not even think that they would do something like that. District Attorney Paul Frazier told the press while announcing plans to have a forensic anthropologist examine Garner's remains. Domestic pigs are typically non-aggressive, according to John Killifer, head of the Animal and Rangeland Sciences yeah, so Department this at Oregon State University. But there is some degree of danger associated with any animal. 
Moreover, Garner's pigs were much bigger than average, tipping the scales at over 700 pounds, that is a begging big boy. the question of whether their size played a role in the tragedy. Number six. Right, maybe they were just Humphrey extra the hungry because they were so big. After ignoring repeated warnings that his pet hippopotamus Humphrey was a dangerous wild. Okay, this this sucks because hippos. I wish that you could freaking own a hippo, and I wish they weren't so aggressive. But they're one of the most aggressive creatures, to my understanding, on on the planet. So. Uh, but when they're little babies, dude, even grown-ups, I think they're really cute. But the little babies are so freaking cute, man. Hippos are so cute. But this guy should have known, and he did know, there's no way in hell he should have owned this hippo. Number so. six, Let's see this story. Humphrey the Hippo. After ignoring repeated warnings that his pet hippopotamus Humphrey was a dangerous wild animal who could never truly be tamed, Marius Els, a South African farmer and army major, was found dead, submerged and mutilated in a river. His pet hippo had bitten him to death. Yeah, dude. The forty-year-old man had purchased up. Humphrey when he was just five months yeah, old. Cutie. After he became too big for the family cutie. who originally took him in, after rescuing him from the very river his deceased owner was found in. Wow. Over the years that Humphrey spent on Elle's four hundred acre farm, he became like a son to the man. The pair swam together, and there are even photos of Els fearlessly riding the 1.3 ton animal. Wow, but I want to see that photo. That's the problem, is you own these dangerous animals, and then you feel like you've got an emotional connection. You're like, dude, this guy won't ever hurt me. We've spent a lifetime together. We've spent all... Dude, it just... If something clicks, remember that animal is bigger than you. It can take you out on just one bad day that's all it takes guys one bad day don't tempt it man free was far from harmless he had an established history of breaking out of his enclosure chasing people and killing livestock even els's wife was uncomfortable with keeping a hippo as a pet yeah but this did not so stop the man from doing what he wanted there's a relationship between me and humphrey and that's what some people don't understand el said months before his death they think you can only have a relationship Damn. with dogs cats and domestic animals but I have a relationship with the most dangerous animal in Africa. It is indeed true that hippos are responsible for more human deaths than lions, elephants, leopards, buffalo, and rhinos combined. That is crazy. As it turns out, tells us the hard way that he. I did not know that, dude. Look at that elephants, list. Leopards, buffalo, and rhinos. A hippo is responsible for more human deaths than all of these animals combined. I wouldn't have guessed, dude. How is how are hippos killing so many damn people? What? Combined. As it turns out, Els learned the hard way that he was no exception to this statistic, despite believing that he had a special connection with Humphrey. Who's got more kills? Number Alligators five. or Cats. hippos? In July 2010, humane officials were given the gruesome task of removing a dozen cats from an Albion, Pennsylvania home, where a 74-year-old former teacher named Herbert Walden and his 94-year-old mother Jane were found dead. Enough time had passed, Damn. over a week, authorities believed, for the cats to become desperate for food and start eating the elderly gentleman's oh, foot. Dude. Walden likely died from a heart attack, according to the Erie County Deputy Coroner Korak Tyman, the morning call reported. Jane, who relied on him for care, probably succumbed to dehydration following her son's death. Bro, what a sad story, man. The mom relies on the son, the son ends up dying, so then the mom has a slow terrible death and then the cats i mean this isn't even a fault of the cats dude they had to eat it became a matter of survival right so they're not malicious they're not crazy it was purely survival dude it's like people that get caught up in the mountain and then they have to resort to terrible like cannibalism right they don't want to freaking do that dude but it's a matter of survival and your survival instincts kick in because so. she was unable to fetch her own water by the sounds of things, the Walden's living situation was unhealthy to begin with. Ugh. Their home lacked running water and was strewn with garbage stacked nearly to the ceiling. That's bad, With dude. no usable toilet, the pair went to the bathroom in buckets and transferred the contents into containers which lined their hallway. Oh, man. And in addition to the 12 live cats that the authorities Ugh. rescued, they found a dead dog and four dead cats. Ugh. Number four. Spiders, Terrible. bugs, All and around. lizards. This story is somewhat of an internet slash urban legend, claiming that residents of an apartment building in Dortmund, Germany, noticed an unbearable stench coming from a neighbor's unit and summoned police to the scene. What the authorities supposedly encountered was a nightmare. The dead body of the apartment's occupant, Mark Vogel, had been gnawed on by hundreds of spiders, several snakes, thousands of termites, and a gecko. 
The 30-year-old man who kept a practical zoo in his home was fatally bitten by his black widow spider, Bettina, the story says. It was fatally like a bitten. So Black widow spider, I mean, how potent is that bite, dude? Fatally bitten. I think if you're bitten by a black widow, you don't just immediately like collapse, right? Don't you have time to get help? Or did he just figure, ah, I don't need help, like, I'm going to be good, and then he wasn't good, I don't know. For a movie, a police spokesperson is quoted as saying, his corpse was over the sofa, giant webs draped him, spiders were all over him, they were coming out of his nose and his mouth. This Dude. spokesperson's description <laughs> only got more horrifying from there. Larger pieces of flesh torn off by the lizards were scooped up and taken back to the webs of tarantulas and other bird-eating spiders, hell? he continued. This is definitely a great story Dude, for Halloween. That is true. Gabby Bayer, a spider expert and animal cruelty officer, reportedly said that the creatures, which included several poison frogs, should never be allowed in a private home. Vogel allowed reptiles to freely roam the residence, news reports claimed, and his spiders escaped their cages following his death when their heating units exploded. This is arguably the most gruesome this story, maybe, crazy. but it also holds the distinction of being of questionable credibility. At some point, the story caught the attention of ABC Australia's Media Watch, which published an article showing that the story had been published numerous times over the years, including in 2004, 2007, and 2011. Despite this, the story remains as popular and believed as ever. Number three. So there's no concrete information on whether that story actually happened. I don't know, so then you can't totally discount it either, right? You can't totally discount that it didn't happen. And if it did happen, that is just insane. That memory has to be with you as an officer forever, going in there and seeing spiders crawling in and out of this person's mouth, bits of flesh stuck in spider webs, uh, geckos gnawing at your open wounds. My dude, just what a story. Teddy the Black Bear. Ross Township, Pennsylvania resident Kelly Ann Waltz loved the animals she kept in her hilltop menagerie, which included a tiger, mountain lion, and a 350-pound black Let me bear guess the named bear Teddy. Took you out. Get it? Lions, tigers, and bears. But huh. the animals didn't necessarily love her back, as the 37-year-old woman learned the hard way in October 2009 when she went to clean Teddy's cage and he mauled her to death. Yes, of Kelly's course. husband, Mark Waltz, had kept animals for years as an exotic pet dealer at the couple's home in the Poconos Mountains region. Nothing out of the ordinary indicated that Kelly might oh, be in danger when bear. she entered the black bear's 15 by 15 foot steel and concrete cage to clean it. Unfortunately, a shovel full of dog food wasn't enough to distract Teddy that day, when for reasons none of us will ever fully understand, he turned on his owner. Kelly's children and her neighbor's kids witnessed the horrifying attack oh, and scrambled for no. help. By the time someone shot Teddy dead, it was too late to save her. Dude, that's the worst, man. You, you're playing with fire, right? I mean, that saying is all you gotta know about life. You play with fire, you're bound to get burned, bro. You can only get away with it so long, like, you will get burned. And the sad thing is, she was playing with fire, and so was her husband. But they had their kids involved, and their kids, unfortunately, because of this, ended up having to see their mom murdered by this animal. Like, shit, dude. Mm. No matter how comfortable someone is with their wild pet, it's customary for owners to use two section cages that enable them to isolate the animal and safely clean the enclosure. That's going to be your Tim best Conway bet. Tim Conway of the Pennsylvania Game Commission told CBS that why this woman chose to go in the same area that the bear was in is beyond me. Just it's a fatal mistake. Number two, Ego monitor at that point. lizards. You think you got it all when Ronald control? Huff of Newark, Delaware, didn't show up for work one day in 2002, police conducted a welfare check. What they found inside Huff's home was nothing short of horrifying. The man's corpse propped upright against a door, being devoured by his seven Nile monitor lizards. The six-foot-long creatures were covered in their owner's blood and had consumed his face, hands, and some of his internal organs. Ooh. A week or two before Huff died, one of the monitor lizards bit him, causing a staph infection. In a 2018 interview with The Sun, Huff okay, how long ago, how long was that? Lizards bit him, and had consumed his face, hands, his and death? some of his internal organs. A week or two before Huff died, one of the monitor lizards bit him, causing a staph infection. So a week or two before he died, they bit him, causing a staph infection. In a 2018 interview with The Sun, Huff's former neighbor, Jeff Wildonger, explained that the man allowed the reptiles to roam his apartment freely. 
Although the cause of Huff's death was ruled inconclusive, Wildonger believes that he must have had a fever from yeah, his staff infection, infection and sat down fever. near the front door, one of the only cool places in his home, which he kept at a high temperature for his pets. His cheeks had been eaten off and his molars were where his ears should be, said Wildonger, who caught a glimpse of the traumatizing scene. As officers attempted to confront the scene, the venomous flesh-eating reptiles hissed at them. Some of the lizards were relocated to zoos, while the more aggressive ones were euthanized. Damn, dude. Yeah, I don't know. That's got to be one of the roughest things to imagine, is getting eaten by your, uh, by your pets. Okay, getting eaten by your pets. Number 1. Travis the Chimp Sometimes you just have to wonder what people are thinking. Why do you want a chimp as a pet? They are incredibly smart and loving, but they are also strong and wild and don't really belong in a house. Unfortunately for a woman named Charla Nash, her best friend's chimp Travis turned on her and attacked her. Travis was actually an animal actor and had appeared in TV shows and commercials. He was raised by hand at what is now the Missouri Chimpanzee Sanctuary and became well known in the what town. The hell is wrong with her he had been socialized around humans since birth, and while he did like to play and wrestle, he always seemed to know when to stop. Sandra Harold had raised the chimp herself, considering him as her adopted son, but was having trouble one day in 2009. Travis had gone on a tirade and had escaped the house. Charla came over to help and things got completely out of hand. She and the chimp knew each other, but she had changed her hairstyle, which may have confused Travis. Mm. Next thing, he was attacking her, biting her face and hands. Sandra started hitting him with a shovel to get him to stop and he turned and got angrier. She called the police, who at first thought it was a hoax, but you can actually hear the screaming in the background. Sandra screams, he's eating her! Charla suffered horrendous injuries, but medical personnel had to wait in case they got attacked as well. Jeez. Police finally arrived, and Travis attacked the vehicle, smashing the windows and opened the passenger door, where a police officer shot him several times. Shit. He died, and the story became international news. Charla had huge medical bills and tried experimental face transplant surgery, but was very afraid to show herself in public. She sued her friend for fifty million dollars. Wow! Thanks dude. for watching. I hope. Oh, how terrible, man! How terrible! But you know, chimpanzees—they're small, but they're stronger than your average human, right? And uh, they can be super aggressive, from what I understand. So, yeah, very bad to, in my personal opinion, to own pets and that don't really belong in a home they belong in the wild man uh they're you know they can get that instinctive you know attack kind of frenzy going on and uh if they're more powerful than you you're gone in my opinion so yeah pretty rough dude let me know what y'all thought about that one dude hopefully you appreciated that one and enjoyed it if you did don't forget to like and subscribe i'll be pushing out more of this type of content so if you enjoy it subscribe and stick around and i'll catch you guys on the next one peace